later on, but we will now have a special. So Barcelona will meet Cologne and we will have another person joining us here. But you can uh, go ahead and take a seat in the middle, Daniel. Thank you. And uh, I'm very delighted that we will now be talking about rethinking urban public space. Barcelona will meet Cologne and I am delighted to announce the Council of for, Mobili for Mobility from the city of Cologne. His name is Askan Egera. Applause please for him. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Welcome, Mr. Egera. You may be seated. Thank you. It's uh, great to have you here as a representative of Cologne, since we're here in the city of Cologne. And we would like to talk about rethinking public space. I mean, we have with Cologne and Barcelona definitely two wonderful cities represented that are interested in recreating and making cities a more livable and human-centric space. And before we jump into the talk, I would really like to hear from you, Mr. Egera, what is maybe um, the the status quo right now in Cologne, I mean, we have just listened uh, to Barcelona and I think as Germans we often like to look at Barcelona and say, oh, so many wonderful things happening there, why do they not happen in Germany? So maybe you could give us, um, yeah, just a status quo of Corona, uh, of Corona, not of <laughs> Cologne, sorry about that. Where do we stand in comparison? And uh, yeah, just give us a short overview maybe. Yes, with, uh, with pleasure, of course. But first, I want to say uh, many thanks for this wonderful and uh, very interesting presentation from Barcelona. Uh, and uh, yeah, which shows us what you have uh, or what you do there and what you have already done. Uh, it's very, very uh, impressive. Um, yeah, and now we have a look to Cologne. Um, and yeah, I will give you a short uh, overview of what we are doing, um, which are our importance, uh, what are the, the most important projects. And first, I, I want to um, speak about the Sustainable Urban Mobility Plan, mm -hmm. the SAMP. Uh, I think Barcelona had uh, such a plan already, of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we started uh, last year um, working on this uh, Sustainable Urban Mobility Plan. And uh, I don't know if it's, you know that it's, it, it builds on proven planning um, approaches and pays uh, particular attention to collaboration, participation uh, and evaluation principles. And the focus here is on consistently promoting the switch to climate friendly means of transport, mm -hmm. of course. Um, and in this context, we conducted a representative survey of the population um, of Cologne regarding mobility behavior. Mm. Uh, we get the results last week and published mm. uh, the results too. And uh, I can say we are surprised okay. uh, about these results. Yeah. Uh, they show us uh, that we are on the right track, uh, I would say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, for example, 25% of Cologne citizens already use bicycle for the ways. That is impressive. Yeah, and another 25% uh, use uh, cars for the ways, uh, of course. But uh, the last survey, um, it was in the year uh, 2017, and uh, there was uh, um, there's a part of uh, ways uh, which are uh, done with CARB about uh, 33%. Mm -hmm. no? And we, we see an, an, um, yeah, also a very positive uh, development mm -hmm. here no? mm -hmm. yet. Um, our, yeah, our target is for the future, um, we want uh, that uh, Cologne residents, regardless of age, whether with or without a handicap, uh, to be able to move around the city comfortable and sustainable. Um, to achieve this, we must expand bike paths and foot paths, of course. Uh, we have to upgrade public road space and we must promote neighborhood, neighborhoods with few cars. No? That's uh, corresponding with uh, superblocks. Definitely. Um, yeah, and uh, if we succeed in replacing the many short car trips in the city, then commercial traffic and those who really depend on the car will also have a benefit. Mm -hmm. no? That's mm -hmm. a big discussion. No? What's about us? Uh, no? And you are yeah. thinking about us. No? But I think it's, it's positive for all then. Um, to achieve this, we are developing uh, target networks, uh, we call it, or prioritizing networks, and it's, it's, it's corresponding with the visions of your networks. Yes. Uh, we have seen uh, in your presentation, um, we haven't the green network yet, okay, yeah, but no, the other three networks we are 
uh, our, our target. Um, yeah, such as public transport. No, it's traditionally in a, in a network, of course, but also in cycling and motor vehicles. And uh, yeah, to do, we want to, to bundle the traffic no, in these networks, of course. Yeah. Um, in the area of cycling, we have uh, had a main cycling network for the entire city area since mm -hmm. yeah, um, 2022 in the summer. For the whole city, we have uh, nine uh, city bezirke. Uh, I don't know what's in the councils, no? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nine uh, areas. No? And this is the start uh, to, yeah, to begin to um, yeah, construct this network for, mm -hmm. for, for cycling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No? We have already uh, some uh, detailed projects no? that are in, in, in reality and in, in, in use. No? But now we can uh, build the, the target uh, picture no? where we want to go in a few years. Mm -hmm. That's the chance uh, we, we have here. No. And we can prioritize planning and uh, for continuous and attractive uh, bicycle connections. Yeah. Um, we're also uh, developing a basic network for motor, motor vehicle uh, traffic. Uh, we called it MIV, also MIV, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. motorized individual uh, traffic mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. network. No. On this network, we want to enable efficient motor vehicle traffic and continue to maintain it in the event of traffic measures or redesigns. Now, of course, we, we have this traffic no, and we can't uh, eliminate it uh, completely. Mm -hmm. We have to do this. Um, but um, we want uh, that the motor vehicle traffic has a lower priority, of course. No, we want to reduce it uh, and want to uh, prioritize other uh, uses. Um, the city of Cologne is in the process of upgrading the, its cycling infrastructure, infrastructure as a whole. Um, at several places, we have converted a former car lane into cycle lanes, for example. A good example is a big road called Ring. No, it's, it's the Ring in the, in the, in the inner city, uh, nine kilometers. And no, for a few weeks, we uh, um, yeah, um, concluded it no, the last uh, uh, um, part, which, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, wasn't ready, no, is, is now uh, closed there. Great. Uh, yeah, no, we, we, we show it here in, in our best practice uh, program at the Police Mobility, and uh, you can, can have a look there when, if you want. Um, yeah, um, in addition to that, um, we want to expand capacities in public transport at all. Uh, we want, uh, yeah, also one, one, one uh, point is we want, um, or we have a, a feasibility study for an express bus uh, network, for example. Uh, it, it will be prepared in this year. And the first uh, express bus lines should be operating at the end of 2024. 20, uh, That's mm -hmm. our target. Mm -hmm. New means of transport can also be a useful addition to the existing public transport network. Uh, and we have an, a feasibility study on the water bus for the Rhine. Yeah, the river is here. Uh, and uh, why should uh, we uh, use it? Yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, a decision uh, is, uh, will be made in uh, 2023, uh, I think. Um, and a feasible, uh, another feasibility, uh, feasibility study on a cable car system uh, called Rheinpendel uh, identified sensible operational routes for an urban cable car system. Also we have a look to all uh, possibilities. Now we, we say we want to check all uh, possibilities uh, which can help us. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. At the end, is, it must uh, harmonize to the SAMP, to the Sustainable mm -hmm. Urban Mobility Plan, but mm -hmm. we work um, in uh, parallel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Very, very, thank you very much for mm -hmm. the detailed overview of uh, the city of Cologne. And one can hear that a lot of things are <laughs> happening. And um, what impressed me really much was the number of cyclists you have um, just shared, 25%. I think this is very uh, impressive for a city like Cologne. Um, looking to Barcelona, how many percentage of cyclists do you have? 
I, I am really surprised too. <laughs> <laughs> we are only five percent. We first okay. we, we are you know behind in this uh, in bicycle. Before that, we starting all the bicycle lanes. We, we had like no bicycles in the city. We are now five percent. Of course, we want to push it. We want to get to this twenty five. Hmm. I hope soon, and probably if, you know because bicycle. For a city of Barcelona, which is very compact and dense and proximity city, bicycle is pr probably the best mm, way to move. Mm, definitely. And, and we have nice weather. Uh, and if you do the, the good conditions, people for sure, they will use it. We're a quite mm. flat city, so it's, yeah, we got to get there. Yeah. We have to <laughs> learn. Will, to, you to will, learn. you will. You will for <laughs> sure. But, but good to know, um, as we, most of us here being from Germany, that there is a thing uh, that we do maybe a little better than <laughs> Barcelona. <laughs> and you can uh, learn from us when it comes to cycling and getting people onto bikes. But uh, one thing you said, Mr. Egera, was uh, that one can't eliminate cars to the degree. And one really must look that we um, bring all together um, different objectives and different also vehicles and modes of transport. And uh, I would really like to now talk about a fair division of space, because I think when we talk about a more human-centric city, this is really a topic that we need to focus. So maybe we start with a question, what is a fair division of space and how would it need to look like? Daniel. Actually, in Barcelona right now, 60% of the space of the streets 55 to 60 percent is for the car. 55? Yeah. 55. Okay. Mm -hmm. And only 25 percent of the movements, like in Cologne, yeah. mm -hmm. they are made by car. Mm -hmm. So this, this tells this you that not it's not fair. fair. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not fair. We, we have to, this, this mobility plan that we have that says that in 2024, we should decrease the number uh, of cars about 25 percent. And what our data says, that if we achieve this 25% of reduction of cars, mm -hmm. we can generate all this new uh, pedestrian infrastructure and, mm -hmm. and network. Mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, if you do it progressively and you change, the, people, the, the city needs, uh, they, they have time to recover itself yeah, and to adapt itself. And then you, you can get to the, the, the target, to the goal mm -hmm. uh, progressively. Yeah, so, so the, the goal probably mm. would be yet yeah, this 25% for the car. I mm. don't know if we will get there, yeah, yeah. but it's, yeah, it's it probably will be increasing the number of cars and one day we'll say, okay, there's a space for everyone and all the networks, they work efficiently. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Egera, what's uh, your perspective to a fair division of road space? Yeah, um, first I want to, to add an, an, an answer here to the, to the um, dates with the bicycle uh, part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this is uh, the part only from the inhabitants in Cologne, of course, mm -hmm. not the commuters, ne, which come from outside every mm -hmm. day. Uh, that's a an, an very great, uh, very big uh, number, of course. Ne, and uh, yeah, that, But still that, quite, that's, quite The picture is, is another one, ne, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ja, es ist, äh, in my opinion, äh, the fair relocation of public äh, street äh, space is an essential part äh, to, to make here a change äh, and make traffic more climate friendly and äh, make the, the areas better for the, for the people who live there, of course. Ne? And mm -hmm. it's um, an important point for the pedestrians, of course. Ja, das ist, ähm, many... Um, from uh, um, of the um, uh, many traffic is is by feet, of course. Yeah, yeah it's an increasing yeah. increasing uh, date too. Yeah, yeah. So, what are then the main challenges when it comes to talking about a fair division of road space? I mean, um, we said probably people not agreeing to that, and also that it takes a long process. But what are the main challenges that you're facing in Barcelona when it comes to um, transforming really the city yeah. into a fair space? That's a good question. <laughs> Is that the first challenge it's going to be next Sunday because we have elections. Yeah, there we so, go. Okay. Oh. Uh, the, I don't know if the new government, uh, if it changed, I don't know if it will mm -hmm. change mm -hmm. because they are, you know, the, the surveys, they are very tight. So what's your guess? Will it change? Will it not change? Yeah, the, actually, because the, the transformation has been like in the, the government, the, uh, the current government mm -hmm. has used it as like a very strong marketing, political, yeah. like, argument. And 
all the, the, the other parties, they, they took it the opposite side. So mm -hmm. they, they would say, oh no, super, if I win the super mm -hmm. blocks, they will not be going on because mm -hmm. they want to take this 50% so which has against it. clashing. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I think that even though the, they, we change into more conservative party, they know that something has to change. Probably we will change the brand. They, they will not be super blogs anymore, but no. maybe super green or super okay. whatever. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, so, uh, but they will keep doing something similar of what we are doing. Mm -hmm. So the main challenge is for politicians to be brave and, and go on and doing it, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. my opinion. Yeah. Would you agree to it, Mr. Egera, or what are the main challenges in Cologne, maybe? Uh, yes, I, I agree, and um, I can, I, maybe I can uh, um, have a look on our, our examples. Yeah, uh, sure, uh, please. What we, uh, what we are doing in Cologne, um, we started with traffic attempts, mm -hmm. yeah, on German Verkehrsversuche. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, um, yeah, in the, in, in the past, nothing was done at all for fear of change, I would yeah. say so. Yeah, usually. Uh, mm -hmm. And now, um, yeah, with these traffic attempts, uh, we gain knowledge and can change planning. Uh, we can create short-term and fair relocation of existing traffic uh, spaces without costly reconstruct re reconstruct reconstruction. Yeah. No? It's fast no? and we have to discuss it uh, at, this, uh, at the streets and uh, with the inhabitants there, of course. But it's uh, fast and uncomplicated um, and with, with, without high uh, uh, costs. No? We have the Deutsche Freiheit here, it's not far away. Um, um, it's, um, there's implementation of a, politi a political discussion of, uh, decision, of course. Um, and not everything is running smoothly yet. Yeah? It's, it's, it's all clear. No? Evalu evaluation uh, will shed light on how things can and should continue. Uh, and we, we, we learned our lessons here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a very important point. Um, communication plays a, a key role. Um, in this, um, but we also uh, collect data for 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 the future. No? For example, what's what's about the retail there? Yeah. No? Um, but uh, yeah, we want to measure the the changes in, uh, with mm. these examples. Mm. No? Another uh, example is a, a central shopping street called Ehrenstraße. Um, the Ehrenstraße has been a pedestrian zone since last year. Um, and in this project, uh, we had to learn that some adjustments uh, were necessary for an understanding no, what's happened there, what, what are the new traffic rules. Yeah, that's a an, an, an very interesting point. Uh, and now we have uh, a very new project and we show it here at our, uh, at here at, at, the, at the Polis Mobility. Um, we, you can walk through the street the first time with augmented reality, with an app, and you can see how should it be in a few years. Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. we have only the changes in, in, in the traffic r rules, but yeah. not in the, in yeah. the, to change in this area. Yeah. No? And, but it's a good possibility to, to have a look no? what's in a few years. No? Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. very new. Um, and yeah, we... Yeah, I, I can only uh, recommend uh, to to to, um, to ex this, this 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 experience here to to, mm -hmm. to, to show mm -hmm. it. Yeah, mm. thank you so much. Uh, I've been for a walk yesterday, and I've mm. seen the uh, Deutsche Freiheit and th this one road, and uh, I thought it was so cute. So many plants. Uh, I was like, ah, oh, this is like almost feeling like a super mm. block. And you were also able to uh, water the plants if you have time. Just um, so fun seeing different people just coming together and actually sitting there using it and enjoying mm. the space they mm. have. So uh, invitation to everyone who hasn't been there, just uh, look around and uh, see the space that has been created. Um, Daniel, for years you have been choosing the top-down approach when it comes to implementing super blocks. And uh, in 2017, the first super block was implemented, and uh, the neighborhood was um, 
not so happy maybe about it and especially not the business people and the car drivers. So um, this is now slowly changing, I have heard. So it's coming now from uh, the people that they want to change. How did you manage that transformation? Do people have to experience it before they can before it? Or how did you win the civil society for Superblocks? The, the first pilot, with, it was like a three by three blocks in an area which is not very dense. It's a transformation area. And the university, they, they made this proposal to the city government to do the, the transformation. We did it tactical way, but we didn't take in account peoples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't inform them. We didn't do any participation. Mm -hmm. So it crashed. Dangerous. Dangerous. But the day after, <laughs> it was like all newspapers, they were saying, okay, it was like big crash. Okay, okay. Yeah, so politicians, they explained, okay, they said, we are sorry, this is not going to happen anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for the next uh, pilot and now the scaling up, we've been doing these processes that take more than one year and we take in account all the associations and commerce people and schools and women association and all kind of people, the stakeholders in the, in the mm -hmm, territory. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in my opinion, and what it worked out after this learning of, of participation is, okay, First pilot, you can collect data, people can experience it, so you can do it like a bigger pilot in a more dense mm -hmm. area. We've, it's been five years in this new second pilot, and now we take all the learnings, and with, you know, when you scale up, then you feel more comfortable, because people already know this, the pilots, and yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's more that y you don't have to simulate but you can have real numbers and you can mm -hmm. show them, mm -hmm. which is kind of easier for us. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it's exactly what Mr. Egra said, that people need to experience it and the communication strategy needs to be good for people not having the feeling, what is that? I don't know, I've never heard, heard of it. So um, thank you so much for sharing your insights. Mr. Egra, is the top-down approach also the way you do it in Cologne or is it coming from the people? First of all, I have to say that uh, our, all measures are based on political decisions, mm -hmm. of course. We can uh, suggest uh, some changes, of course, yeah. but most of them are, uh, come from the political um, um, uh, area uh, and um, yeah, from the people. Yeah? That's, mm -hmm. that's bottom up, in, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah, to involve in a project all parties uh, and to listen to their thoughts and find compromises is it's, it's, it's a part of it, of course. Uh, not all is uh, practicable or not all is uh, allowed. Uh, no? And we have uh, um, taxes and, and, and layer and uh, also, no? rechtliche, yeah. What's yeah. What's yeah. Yeah. regulatory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, uh, that's, that's then um, what, what we have to do. Um, so I can say some, it depends on the situation sometimes, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so I sum up to accelerate the bottom-up process and it, it needs good communication, it needs um, pilot projects to start out in a small scale to then uh, collect data and then uh, really scale it up and make it bigger and then use the learnings from the pilot projects to implement it into bigger and then make it experiential for everyone. Thanks uh, a lot for that insights. So can we use Barcelona as a blueprint when it comes to Superblock. So can any city just say, okay, I want to copy what Barcelona has done and implement it in the city? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, a goal. Actually, there's uh, uh, this study made by a Swiss university. We don't even talk to them. Mm -hmm. And they took the, the idea of Barcelona and they studied all the cities in the world and they saw that more than 40% of the cities in the world, they have good conditions to apply the super blocks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Works. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, are there three tips you could give a city like Cologne or any other German city that is represented here today? Anything that you have learned along the process that you could give us um, to take it home with us? Yeah, I would say to be brave, even though you have criticism and to, to try to, I mean, if you are sure that you are doing the right thing, 
then you can be braver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have all this pressure sometimes, but if you believe in it, then you will do it for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, the, my advice would be, even though w the, the day I was telling before that it crashed, the first pilot it crashed, mm -hmm. but our politicians they said okay. We don't, that's a good idea. We, we know we can do it better, but mm -hmm. we have to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. So if the day they were very brave, because all of the media, they were really against Crushing, it. Crushing, yeah. But it's slowly, progressively, but step by step, mm -hmm. but being brave and constant all the time. Mm. So it really needs also the support from politics in order to implement that. <laughs> A blueprint, yeah. and I'm very happy that we meet here. Yeah, of yeah. course, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's wonderful. And uh, we are preparing um, now a, a new project um, called uh, Superblocks for Cologne. No, we want to start uh, maybe in this year, maybe uh, in, 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 in beginning of the next year. Uh, we will see. No, but it's, uh, that's, 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 it's, a, it's a part of our, our vision too. No? Mm. And yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, very good to see what. Uh, what was the way uh, in Barcelona? That we'll, we'll be here to help if we can, <laughs> for sure. This sounds yeah, we want, we want, uh, it's, it's new for us. We want to uh, make it in, um, in, in, we want to set up an, an, an citizens panel at the first time. It's new for us no, uh, to begin and to start uh, with the people who live there. No? That's, that's, that's a new, uh, a, a new uh, part uh, to, to communication and uh, to make decisions. It's, Something like that. Sounds very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Egera, for just pushing that topic also and really enabling Superblocks also here in Cologne. There were two questions that I would uh, like to ask you before we come to the final question, Daniel. So uh, the question arose from the audience, uh, how the administration um, is organized in uh, the city, uh, so in the city administration, how many people work uh, on super blocks only and how are you organized in the city council? Yeah, uh, we are around 15 to 20 people. That only work on super blocks? Only, uh, yeah, exclusively in super blocks. We made this team, uh, it's called the super block technical office. Mm -hmm. yeah, it belongs to the city council and we have like architects, engineers, uh, geographers, uh, all kind of stakeholders that, that will help, uh, specialists in, in trees, uh, um, all kind of uh, specialists. And we have like two, two big teams, the strategy team that holds, you know, all the, whenever we get to a territory and we start doing all the studies and simulations and all collecting data. And whenever it's participated with the people, we pass it to the project and works team mm -hmm. that starts for the, the architectural transformation. Okay. Interesting. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So the final question now from me to you is when you open the newspaper in 2030, what would you like to read about your city? And I start with Barcelona. <laughs> I would love uh, to see an article saying the, the games that kids play in the street, what kind of games people, cool. the kids can play in the street. Yeah. Because now before Superblocks, our kids, they don't play in the street. Mm, too dangerous, so, probably. Right, yeah. And, yeah. and it's not possible because cars, they are passing all the time. So if I can see an art article saying the type of games they play, I would be really happy. That would be an achievement. This sounds good. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Mr. Egera. Ooh, good question. I, 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 a good headline could be, uh, thank you for your courage in the last eight years. And uh, thank you for, to, uh, for took uh, seriously in uh, beginning and uh, doing the changes in mobility. Yeah. I think that was a an, an good uh, headline for me. <laughs> <laughs> sounds sounds good. Thank you so much for this exchange, Cologne meeting, Barcelona. I think we've all learned a lot and I really want to thank you and appreciate you for what you do because I think you all um, really create a more livable city that we all want to live in. So thanks a lot and applause for our guests. Thank you. Thank you.